This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, here's Spencer Linton. And Dave McCann. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Friday. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. August 26th, one day closer to BYU football, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, alongside the aforementioned Mr. Dave McCann, a man who is still courageously persuading his kids to root for BYU and no Aggies. You know, uh, they all grew up BYU fans, and my three daughters have graduated from Utah State and and defected, so to speak. I have a son up there who's a junior. I think he's still with us, although I can feel he's he's being pulled. So what I've done is I've shifted my focus to the grandkids. I'm going to try to save them. And uh, and so little by little, that's how we're doing it. But uh, the Aggies are playing tomorrow against UConn. BYU will play them uh, before a general conference coming up the end of September. And so I'll be keeping an eye on the Aggies tomorrow, see what they have. Then they go play Alabama. So we'll know what Utah State's got here over the next couple of weeks. But the beauty of it is the games are back yes. tomorrow morning. Games are back, and uh, you and I were talking on the phone this morning uh, about a couple of Mountain West teams. Just because BYU doesn't play doesn't mean there's an interest for BYU fans. Certainly, we're paying attention to Utah State, and then Wyoming gets an early kick as well. So yeah, against Illinois. You, you get a really good look at a couple of teams that are on BYU's schedule. Football is back, and it's glorious. Hey, James Dye last night, assistant coach with Snow. They won their opener 36-14 to 14, uh, against Trinity Valley. So there's a win for a, a Cougar already. Let's go. We're already 1-0, kind of. We, we kind of gave him BYU Sports Nation karma in a way, so we're going to take some credit for that. <laughs> On college football eve, we have just a show lineup to get you set for a big football weekend, including one of my favorite college football and NFL draft experts. His name is Cam Meller, longtime friend of the program. Which BYU football player is off the NFL radar, Dave? but will be drafted next spring. He's going to answer that question. How about all of you? Which BYU players are you buying stock options in right now as a sleeper, as maybe someone that's not being talked about nationally right now, but you think is going to be all over NFL draft boards by the end of the season? Plus, ninth-ranked BYU women's soccer is in Big Ten country tonight. It's game day on a season opener for 10th-ranked BYU women's volleyball and a two-touchdown night for a former BYU football star, only to have it cut short by injury. That leads us in today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Matt Bushman. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times for the Chiefs tight end. Last night he had two touchdowns, 73 yards of receiving in a 17-10 win against the Packers, but he broke his clavicle after the third reception of the night. Six to eight week recovery, according to former Cougar and Chiefs head coach Andy Reid after the game. Final cuts come Tuesday. I think he was going to make that roster. Yeah. Now we'll see. At worst, he was going to be a practice player, yeah. a practice squad player. That's what he was last year. It's just such bad timing. It's, it's, it's right the before the season. So I feel like Matt, I'm, certainly he's got football left in him, but it just, it just hurts that now he's maybe going to be technically unemployed as a football player for six to eight weeks while he gets healthy, and then we'll see what happens. I saw that last night, and I thought to myself, there's no fairness in football. No. It's a brutal sport and uh, uh, such an untimely yeah. injury. Well, well done, Matt, on the two touchdowns yeah. and the 73 yards. We wish you a speedy recovery, and we expect more great things from Matt Bushman to come when he gets healthy. 10th-ranked BYU women's volleyball in their 2022 season debut today and tonight. Doubleheader special on Friday. Game against Ryder, the Bronx. At 2 Eastern in the Smithfield House, we'll go live courtside to Jerem Jordan in about 45 minutes to discuss that matchup, plus preview the second game against Duke tonight at 9 Eastern. Dave, we think this is the first time any Duke team has been in Provo. Like, we can't recall a team from Duke that's been to Provo for a home BYU game of any sort. Might also be the first time that BYU sports have had matchups against Duke and Ohio State on the same day. I'll take it. I'll take it. Ninth-ranked women's soccer team in Columbus tonight. They'll take on the 20th-ranked Buckeyes. 6 o'clock Eastern time on BYU Radio. Last year's national runner-up, 1-0 on the season. Looking to get to 2-0 and then have a home opener against Colorado on Monday. Yeah, we'll be ready for that live on BYU TV. How about some basketball news? Eric Mika 
playing for Team USA, had uh, 11 minutes of action, 5 points, 3 rebounds in a World Cup qualifying game for Team USA yesterday. They beat Uruguay 105-71. Now, I say it that way because I was told specifically by one of our followers, it's not Uruguay, Spencer. It's not Uruguay. It's Uruguay. So I've been I'm offending. Sticking, I'm sticking to it. Uruguayans my entire life. <laughs> as I've said, uh, Team USA takes on Columbia on Monday. <laughs> Michael Rucker, Cubs pitcher and the only BYU Cougar on a 40-man roster in Major League Baseball. Back on the hill yesterday, pitched an inning against the Cardinals. A strikeout, a hit allowed, no runs. He's been playing great. Last 12 appearances, in fact, 14.1 innings. Three earned runs, 18 strikeouts, Woo! and three wins for the Cubs, who are at the Brewers today. And look for Rucker. He gets in about the sixth or seventh inning, and he just gets the job done. Mike Rucker, the setup man, right? Setup man. Oh, I love it. Uh, some men's tennis news. They released their schedule for the 2022-2023 season. They will start playing for the Bedford Cup in Colorado Springs on September 23rd. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. Dave, it's a fun Friday. It's football eve of sorts on the college front, and we're going to play a little game. We're going to have some fun with our friends at the law offices of Bagley, McCann, and Linton <laughs> and discuss some Stock options as we look at the BYU football personnel and who you need to buy stock in right now. Maybe who are some of the off the radar guys among other topics. Okay, so Dave, my first question for you is as an expert, as an expert financially and in stock options and certainly in BYU football. Never been called two of the three, <laughs> so thank you. Which player's <laughs> stock is the highest? of any BYU football player coming out of camp. You know, let's call it Apple stock in, in Jaron Hall. Yeah. And I haven't actually looked at Apple stock lately, but I know the last few years it's been crazy. Uh, everything that Jaron Hall has going for him is positive and the support around him and he's healthy. You know, we didn't see him in the ball game uh, and he played with those banged up ribs for a good part of the season. Those ribs are healed and he's full go. He is, uh, he's at the top of the market. Yeah, and, and frankly, uh, Apple set to release a new product early in September, so their stock remains high. That's a good pick. Jaron Hall, I love that comparison, is the Apple stock right now. It's just consistent. It's good. Yeah, it costs a lot, but it's worth it. And so I, I think I'm with you, and I think it needs to be the BYU quarterback. That's a good sign. Yeah, if we could have just got into Apple early. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the hall early, but this might be his last year. So we just gotta, we just gotta ride the market yeah. with Jaron Hall. Yeah, you, you gotta buy high and then hope that it just gets a little bit <laughs> better, the right? And, and then you you make some dividends on that. But we both agree Jaron Hall has the highest stock right now. It'll cost you, but it's worth every penny we think right now. So the next one is well, okay. So that's that's the standard up there. Who are you down here buying stock in that you think might? Rise. Okay, so I, I feel like we have a couple of uh, middling stock options, if you will. Yeah. And we're kind of in a wait-and-see mode. For me, the guy is Chris Brooks because we've heard from our friends at Cal, Roxy Bernstein of ESPN. He's a big Cal guy, a Cal grad, and he said, listen, you're getting a really good player, really good pass catcher as a running back. He's physical. He's never had a chance to run behind, like, a good offensive line. He hasn't been on a great football team. Now right. he's on what we think is a great top 25 football team. But we're still kind of waiting to see. Well, guess what? I'm taking that leap on Chris Brooks. Like, I'm all in. I'm, I am buying right now that middling stock option. I think that's going to rise for sure. Chris Brooks is my uh, guy that I feel like is going to have that significant stock rise in the first few weeks of the season. He, he's the guy I'm going with. How about you? He's looked good in camp, and he looks, he looks – uh, he's ripped and he's fast. We've watched him catch out of the backfield, and, and why not? I'm going to go with Keanu Hill. Ooh. A lot of the attentions on Puka and Gunner, okay. justifiably so. Okay. But here comes Hill. He had a decent season last year, made some big plays, showed some tenacity on when to cut and get downfield on a broken play, and when the ball's coming right to him, uh, there's a back shoulder toss. I love the size. I love the pedigree. He's from a football family. His dad caught a million footballs at Texas Tech. His uncle was a star at the Cowboys and the Texas Longhorns. It's in his pedigree. I think while you're worried about Rex, Brooks, Nakua, and Romney, that here comes Keanu Hill 
in there. I'd buy stock. I'm buying stock in Hill. Ooh, I like I like that pick too. Yeah, yeah Keanu Hill. And, and like you said, the, the catches he made, we just showed you a few of those. He made catches at pivotal moments, big plays. The touchdown catch against USC comes to mind as the most recent big catch he and made. Rarely is he double covered because they're too worried about everybody else. I love it. Yeah. I love that option. Okay. Now our third stock option, the bounce back stock. So you can go with uh, typically a guy that's been hampered by injuries or perhaps was red shirting just somebody that is kind of off the radar so your bounce back stock Dave who's the guy that you think is going to have a huge bounce back season I scoured the roster and uh, and I think it's gonna be Jake Oldroyd Ooh, okay okay now why the kicker and why Jake Oldroyd well two years ago he was 13 of 13 last year I think I'm just going off my head I think it was 9 of 13 but he had back issues and um, he doesn't have those anymore and a healthy Jake Olderoid is a perfect Jake Olderoid for the most part. Automatic on extra points, and uh, uh, you know you get in, you get on BYU's side of the 50. And uh, you know, two years ago when he was the Lou Groza runner-up, yes. he had three kicks of 50 or more, and they could have been longer. These aren't ones that just crawl over the bar. Great leg. His health is everything, and I, I, I he was good last year. He was great the year before. I think he's the bounce back stock of okay. when he comes in. That's money. It's guaranteed money. Guaranteed money. <laughs> guaranteed on your return, at least three points. He does have someone in his kicker's room with the name of Cash, Cash Peterman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. take the cash and invest in uh, <laughs> the kicker. Jake Oldroyd. Okay, my bounce back special is Keenan Peely. Keenan Peely is going to have, for lack of a better number, a million tackles this season, it feels like, Dave. He was all over the field early last year. How about 17 tackles in that Arizona yes, game? Yes, amazing. And we're going to see more of that from Peely. He's healthy. He's back. We'll see more of those Arizona performances. The performance he had against Utah was really solid, and he was playing well until he got hurt against Arizona State. Keenan Peely is a difference maker for the entire BYU defense. He changes what BYU's defense is as a whole when he is locking up that middle linebacker position. If he stays healthy, Dave, his stock is low right now. He's, I mean, he had the significant injury. He's a guy I feel like could rise probably the most. From where he is starting yeah. to where he will finish, assuming health, he goes through a full slate. You watch out for Keenan Peely. He will be an NFL draft pick. So not just buying stock for the college football season. I'm buying stock on Keenan to get into the NFL as a draft pick as long as he can stay healthy. He's just – he changes the entire dynamic yeah. of that, uh, that defense and uh, – he allows the other guys around him now to go back into their natural positions. Keenan Peely's my guy. I'm going to sell a couple of my old droid shares and take that money and invest in Okay, it. okay. So now i got money in both camps. <laughs> uh, I, thought, I thought he brought such moxie to yeah. the defense. And when he went out, they lost that. They didn't have him for Baylor, and they didn't have him for Boise State during critical times yeah. of, can anybody stop these guys? And uh, who was the one guy they missed the most? Number 41. You want to talk about some areas that BYU's defense really struggled in last year? Third and short. Yeah. They had a terrible time getting off the field on third and three or fewer. What do you think would make a difference there? Maybe a star middle linebacker? Well, think about it. Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, they weren't very good on third and short against BYU last year. Then Peely's out, and it's different. Yes. Everyone's moving around. He's the difference maker. So third and short, if you if you want help there, bring back Keenan Peely. And frankly, he makes the red zone defense a lot better, too. And BYU had some of their some issues there as well. So right. yeah, I just really, really think that he's going to have a fantastic bounce back season. Okay, now let's go with the long shot buy. Okay. Now, these are the stocks that, that no one's thinking about. All right. That might, you know, be, have big payoffs. Who are you going with? Okay, so in the wide receiver room, we, we've talked – ad nauseum about how many different options Jaron Hall has okay with Puka and Gunner and Keanu Hill he's a guy that you you like as a middling stock guy um, I'm going with somebody that I feel like has been consistent has been there all camp and it's just he's just been down the depth chart and so no one's really talking about him but somebody from the secondary brought him up to me the other day and was like you watch out this guy deserves more respect and it's Braden Cosper Braden Cosper is my long play in All the right. wide receiver room. It, we hear about Chase Roberts and Cody Epps. And yeah, those guys are awesome too. Braden Cosper has been quietly the most consistent wide receiver in fall camp. Okay, The most consistent. 
He's his health is good. Why didn't we see him last year? Because he got hurt. He got hurt. Exactly right. Yeah. He got hurt, and then we saw the ascension of you know Puka and Gunner, and they kind of took over along with Keanu Hill. Right. Braden Cosper is going to have a bigger role this year. He's my long shot stock buy. Okay, uh, he he's the guy that's just been biding his time. He kind of reminds me of Dax Milne. He's got great hands. His strength is in precision footwork and the route running. Um, he he beats you in in places that uh, if you don't work as hard as him, he's going to have an advantage there. Like, he just will work harder than you, and that's how he beats you. Uh, he's got great hands. Braden Cosper, who do you got? No one wants to hear mine, but I'm going to announce it anyway. Nobody? Because if it comes to fruition and I cash in on the stock, that means some things that happen that we don't want to see happen. <laughs> but I'm going to buy my long shot stock in uh, Jacob Conover, the backup corner. Hey, that stock's good next year too, Dave. It's, it's, like, oh, it's, it's good? It's, it's good next year. Well, I was thinking of, you know, because we all want uh, instant payoff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, Conover has had a, a, a good spring, and he's had a good summer, and we've watched him, and he's looked sharp. He's won the number two job uh, uh, in fall camp, and Cade Finnegan just a little bit behind, but th those two might battle for the starting job next year. But... Um, Jaron Hall's got a very physical schedule, and uh, BYU needs him to stay healthy to be successful. But in the event that he's not, Conover is ready to come in and utilize all the tools that will be out there on the field. Okay. It's not, oh, Hall's out, it's over because of my long shot stock. Okay. Because Conover can do the job. <laughs> we just want Jaron Hall to do the job in all in all 12 games and the bowl game. But, you know, I'm putting stock in Conover okay. just as, a, as an emergency I like thing. I like it. May, so let's say, let's say maybe there's uh, a few scrapes and bruises and, and Jaron's nicked up a little bit and you need Jacob Conover to come in and take on an East Carolina or a Wyoming or something like that. He can do that. Maybe he's the day trading, right? It's the day trading <laughs> stock option. Whoa, whoa, just for, just for the day. Let's just go. Day. But prime time, we want to see number three back up. <laughs> yeah. For sure. All right. All right, our question of the day. Which BYU football player, or players, you can have as many as you want, are you buying stock in before the season starts? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, first response in from at shorts all year 66 <laughs> on Twitter. Must be in California. It's a great Twitter handle. Shorts all year. I'm here for it. Uh, they say... Jaron Hall and Chris Brooks are easy bets. Mm -hmm. But if I'm buying stock low and selling high, it would be Keanu Hill and Braden Cosper. Interesting. How about that? Did that just come in? <laughs> did we write that tweet, or is that actually that one actually came in? <laughs> yeah. Can we get a timestamp on that tweet? <laughs> Ammon Malone on Instagram says, The kicker, Jake Aldroyd. Most underrated player on the field, I'll buy my stock low and be a rich man. I'm told that the Friday audience is the most intelligent of the week. Wow, how about and, that? Uh, that has been supported <laughs> here with our responses. But think about it. If you have a wounded kicker, you're going for it on fourth and three when normally you'd kick a field goal. Um, when healthy, you, yeah. get, you, just, you get points every time your offense is on the field, you win games. How nice was it going back two seasons ago, and even points last year, you know, because it had been absent from BYU football for so long. But to trot out a kicker onto the field from 45-plus yards and not really worry about it, like, ah, he's probably going to make the kick. Yeah. Depending, yeah, no, don't worry about the angle. He'll, he'll get it in. He's probably going to make this 46-yard field goal or this 48-yard field goal. Like, it, BYU fans were barren in that, it, like, in that scenario for so long. And now Jake Holder kind of, like, restored that. Little shaken up, little banged up last year. Looking for that bounce back season this year. And then Ryan Rico comes in. He's probably going to punt at 83 yards. Yeah. Yes. Like he did against Arizona. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's go. Coming up, cross country coach Ed Eyestone is looking for some attention, and we're going to give it to him. We continue with our stock conversation and bring in an NFL draft and college football expert, Cam Meller from the Pro Football Network. Who's he buying stock in? This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. 
Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. My name is Spencer Finnegan, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us through things, like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Ninth-ranked BYU soccer taking on 20th-ranked Ohio State tonight in Columbus. Greg Rubel on the call on BYU Radio at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. That's 4 Mountain. Bring your imagination. When there's soccer on the radio, you've got to do your part. And Greg does a fantastic job painting a picture for those listening on BYU Radio. Speaking of Greg, happy birthday to Greg. Happy birthday. What is he, like, 35 today? Uh, well, I know he's my age, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> but a terribly young. Happy birthday, Greg. <laughs> We're live in Studio C with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside the always young, freshly-faced okay. Dave McCann. Makeup and lights. Joining us now as our first guest of the day is one of our favorites on BYU Sports Nation, longtime friend of the program. He is the senior director of college football and the NFL draft at Pro Football Network. His name is Cam Meller. Cam, Happy football eve of sorts, my friend. We're here. It is. It's football eve, right? Less than 24 hours away. I'm gonna have to go uh, say happy birthday to Greg in person. I didn't know. I didn't realize we were in. We were in town for the soccer match tonight. Uh, just in my backyard, the shoe, you know, Ohio State. So I, I might have to go over there and check the game out. That's right. You are in the heart of Columbus, and frankly, not just soccer world for BYU tonight, but college football world. I mean, what a place to be for you. What's this time of year like for you? as you mentally prepare for another football season? Oh, it's, you know, it's getting ready the family life, but it's also getting ready to work the crazy hours. You know, the summer leads four-day weeks, work weeks roughly. You know, you're watching film all the time, but it's nothing really starts uh, until tomorrow, Saturday hits. And it's, you know, you start with game day and then you move on. And it's, for me, it's 12 hours at least straight of football from the noon kickoffs. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't call it a night until that final whistle of the Hawaii games. Cam, we got a stock market theme going on today's show. Uh, which BYU player uh, are you buying stock in right now? Right now, uh, you know, just thinking of the stock market for, for chance, obviously, Jared Hall is the easy answer. But right now, Blake Freeland, if nobody knows who he is nationally, it's it's Blake Freeland. You need to know this kid right now. He might be a local star. You know, might know who he is in and around the state of Utah, perhaps. But the, the massive left tackle in a left tackle void that is the NFL. I think he he is an NFL starter very soon, but also he's a dominant left tackle. And for as big as he is, I don't think people give him enough credit for how well he moves too. So for me, Blake Freeland, before the national eyes get on him and the draft picks get on him in January, and they start saying, wait, who's this kid from Provo? I think you're Blake Freeland's new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Cam Miller is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's keep the stock theme rolling, Cam. Uh, you mentioned Jaron Hall. You've been high on him for a long time, just like you were high on Zach Wilson for a long time. We think he's going to be late first round, early second round pick when all is said and done. Blake Freeland, who knows how high he could fly. Uh, it just depends on if he can stay healthy and do his thing. But who's the guy that maybe is a little off the board or maybe people have forgotten about that you're like, ah, the stock price is really low. 
I'm on the long game with this guy, and, and I think he's going to surprise people by the end of the season. Who's that guy? To me, Keenan Peely. I, I'll start there. I think people may know who he is, but if he stays healthy, I've heard comps to what he means to the defense of a Jalen Petrie from Baylor last year. So if you look at a kid like that who had Jalen Petrie been three inches taller, we're talking about him as a top five pick because he's got Derwin James-esque ability. So wow. if Peely's getting comps like that, this is not just from scouts in the local area. This is national. So if, if Keenan Peely is, is a 12-game starter, 13-game player, if there's a bowl game at the end of the year, which there should be, uh, we're looking at him sort of, I think right now, get in. People need to pay attention to who he is as well because that's sort of the, he's not quite off the radar in the sense that he's, you know, not played meaningful snaps in his career before, but all three facets of defense that he does, he does very well when he's on top of his game. So Keenan Peely is my guy on that defense right now. All right, let's look at the futures. Uh, as we continue with the stock theme, as you forecast what's coming for BYU in the season ahead, who are the teams that Cougar Nation should be very leery of that BYU will face? I've, I've said it before. The, one of the harder things right now, I think, in September especially, is going down to, to Florida, Central Florida. So, honestly, that season opener against USF, Jerry Bohannon is also getting a lot of looks from the scouts and as an NFL quarterback, which may surprise some because he, you know, lost the starting job at Baylor and then transferred to USF. But this is a kid who is an upperclassman, going to be invited to all the All-Star games uh, in the, the postseason here as well. So, Jerry Bohannon, but to me, it's Baylor. That that team is stacked with NFL talent, even losing as much as they did to the draft this past year. If you look at it, they got Jackson Player, the defensive tackle transfer from Tulsa, to pair with Siaka Ika on the inside. And then they have Al Walcott. He's about six foot three, 220 at corner, and he moves like he's about a 5'9", 4'3", speed guy. Ooh. So to me, that defense is still incredibly talented. And then I don't need to tell anybody there, but Eric Mateos and, that, and Jeff Grimes know what they're doing on the offensive line. So that offensive line has about five NFL players at least. Yeah, Baylor is an interesting case because, as you mentioned, Cam, they lost a lot of top-tier talent. And it's always hard to assess, okay, well, how much will that impact a team, especially early the next season? But you're high on Baylor. Oregon is a team that brings back a ton of talent, but they've got a new coaching staff. They've got a transfer quarterback from Auburn and Bo Nix, and they're right there with Baylor in the national polls, just a couple of spots behind, if not one spot behind in the AP poll. Are you as high on Oregon as you are on Baylor? And if so, why or why not? In my offices, we call him no Nix. So I am not very high on Oregon at all this year. Um, I think it's actually a step down going from Anthony Brown to Bo Nix, in my opinion. I know he's got four years of SEC starting underneath him, but at that level of play he brings is not sustainable. It's, uh, you know, his highlight real plays are when he's flushed from the pocket, running around, using athleticism, and it's just not sustainable. So to me, Ty Thompson should be the guy going forward for them. Their offensive line is going to be good. Let's face it. Sewell is as good as anybody is at, at their position at linebacker. And so if Justin Flo plays well, there's a lot of talent there. Christian Gonzalez, the corner, though, the Colorado transfer, is a guy that I think people need to pay attention to recently getting first-round buzz. And so, yes, I'm high on their defense as a whole, I think, overall. But as long as Bo Nix is quarterback, I'm not very scared of that Oregon team. BYU-Notre Dame uh, speaks for itself. It'll be huge in October. But the following week, Arkansas comes to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. What about that matchup for BYU? There's a lot of talent, too, there as well. If, if Sam Pittman's done uh, one of the more miraculous jobs, I think, of turning around a program, if you consider how what the level of play they have to play with eight, nine games out of the year and how much they're competitive now where they weren't just a few years back. So it's been built up from the ground, from the ground up. Pittman doing it right on that offensive line. Ricky Stromberg, one of the best centers across the entire nation. Jalen Catalan, though, another guy that if he added 20 pounds and two inches, he'd be talked about in that Jalen Petrie, Derwin James-esque light. So if he stays healthy, they've got a lot of talent as well. But I think overall, Arkansas is still about a year or two away from competing in the SEC. And then by that time uh, in, the, in the season, injuries might take hold. So I'm going to temper my expectations with Arkansas this year. Um, and I'm still putting stock in that, that Baylor team as the, the more stacked team that, Bay, that BYU used to face this year. Senior Director of College Football and the NFL Draft at Pro Football Network. His name is Cam Meller. He's on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars are eight days away from a very tricky contest, as we've discussed, against USF. Is there any other sneaky game on BYU's schedule that you see, Cam, for the Cougars? No, I think, honestly, if you, you look at it, you have to start with the top what we talked about. Notre Dame, to me, I think is where that's probably the only game right now. Baylor and Notre Dame are the only two that I'm looking at. They shouldn't be within at least three points, four point favorites. Um, or favorites or at least close. I think people are going to buy a lot into Notre Dame. I think that one you put your hat in. 
or you know, put the pin in your cap, and then just don't sleep on any of the Mountain West teams this year. I I could pick them all out and, and decide which one I want to, and talk about quarterback play. But at this point, focus on Notre Dame, but also have uh, that peripheral vision going on all those Mountain West teams we got to play as well. We all need our peripheral vision. All right, in October, BYU is going to get their first Big 12 schedule. Who do you want to see the Cougars host in that P5 opener here? That's tough. To me, uh, I mean, if we're looking at the, the the Big 12 landscape of 2023, bring in like a UCF or a Cincinnati, and really let's let's take on those teams. Let's initiate into the Big 12 play. Other than that, bring on like a Texas Tech. Um, let's see how they contend with one of those teams that is a middling Big 12 team to really gauge how well they're going to fare against against those teams against the Big 12 in a in a full Big 12 slate. Texas Texas Tech, TCU. Uh, we'll see what Iowa State does this year. They're always good, but with the, what they have to replace next year, who knows what they're going to look like next year. So to me, Texas Tech, one of those teams. Bring a Texas team. Bring a Texas team in, not, not named Baylor. I cannot wait, and I think I speak collectively for every BYU fan for what that first Big 12 schedule is going to look like. Cam, before you go, I want to go back to some personnel questions within the BYU football team. Uh, because, frankly, when it comes down to assessing talent in BYU, like, you're kind of at the forefront. I've been at the forefront for a long time, calling your shot and being right about that shot. A guy you were very high on two years ago was Peyton Wilgar. Peyton has gone through some injuries. Uh, he's had kind of – it was kind of a weird year last year because he had to change what he did because of the Keenan Peely injury, and he, Peyton himself wasn't okay. Where do you stand on the stock of Peyton Wilgar as an NFL guy who you were so high on a couple of years ago? Still high on him. Um, the injury history, though, obviously, knowing what I do in every year that you look back and you say, what was maybe the ding on this player? Where was the asterisk that they that NFL teams I had on him? And it's injuries, typically. So unfortunately for Peyton, his NFL draft stock took a huge hit uh, when he took the hit and he was injured as well. So I'm still having him as a three down linebacker, both at the college and the NFL level. But right now, I think he's that long shot to get drafted that maybe pushes it to four or five, six players that could be drafted on this team. Um, within the first seven rounds, but he if, if he's not drafted, he's a guy who signs with a team immediately, if not before round seven is over, um, as one of those preferred undrafted free agent guys. So uh, a full slate of 12 games of action for him, where he's playing the majority of snaps on defense, I think gets him back into that day three range, because I think his coverage and his versatility to stop the run and then rush the passer is, is sort of unmatched at his level and what he does. Let's go a little deeper into your crystal ball here. Uh, with the news from earlier in the week, that uh, Oregon has been talking to the Big Ten to see if they might be a fit here in the near future. Um, with that surfacing, what's the situation in the Pac-12? Do you see four teams still going to the Big 12 from there? Does the Pac-12 go away? And on top of all those questions, how can anyone in the Pac-12 trust Oregon if there's any truth to the notion that Oregon's talking to the Big Ten? Hey, you can't really trust them, right? You can't. They're always going to look out for what they, what's best for them, and so you can't trust them at this point with with all every shuffling. To me, when the media rights were were established and we saw how much more money's baked into the contract for the Big Ten, and then there was that caveat that said they're not done expanding. I would assume that they aggressively get as many teams as they can in a big bigger market or at least a marquee name. So Oregon's still a marquee name on the national landscape. I, they'd be silly not to try to bring them on. Um, and then get that. So to me, I don't know how much longer the Pac-12 has to uh, has on their plate coming forward. If Oregon's plucked, and then you know if they're not done in the Big Ten, one or two more. I, I would assume we've seen the last of a. Or this will be the last competitive Pac-12 season in terms of top tier play. Um, and the end probably is near if if Oregon leaves. I think that'd be the tip of the iceberg. So many question marks for sure with conference realignment. Uh, but we'll finish with this. Speaking of questions, Cam. What's the biggest question mark you have about BYU football in 2022? I think besides Tyler Batty, I want to know who rushes the passer. I, I want to see who can get after the passer, both not, not only just on the outside opposite, but also inside. Can there be enough pressure on the inside? Because the question marks also are a little bit back in the secondary. There's a few stars. But I do think that if, if pass rush and coverage, they're almost equally important. I still put the, the emphasis on coverage being more important, but pass rush is very important as well. And so need at least, at least two edge defenders and a, and a guy who can push the pocket on the inside. So I want to see who does that, who rises to the occasion this year. Cam, you are truly the insider, and uh, I just hope you find time to sleep. As a family man, no less. <laughs> you know, we're all on this boat together, wives, kids. Uh, so if you have some advice for us on how to handle it the right way, Dave and I am sure would... would take that advice happily. 
I'm still learning. I think every new season is an adventure. Right now, I got my three and a half year old, near, near four year old, saying, "I can't wait for football to be over already." Uh, and I think it's going to get me up right around those three thirty games after I've been down for about three hours on Saturdays. I think I'll probably make my way upstairs to to be around with them. So it's a balance. I think is what I've found is the best way. Outstanding, Cam. Great to talk with you. We're taking your uh, stock options to the bank, and uh, we'll discuss again soon. Enjoy the weekend of football. Pleasure, guys. Football's back. Thanks for having me. You got it. Cam Mello, director of college football and the NFL draft at Pro Football Network. Again, if you're new to the program and you don't know him, you're like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? He was the original Zach Wilson supporter after Zach had an 11 touchdown, nine interception season with the two injuries in 2019. And he said, you, you watch. He's a special player. And he pointed out, like, not all those interceptions were necessarily bad decisions by Zach. Let him get healthy. And yeah. so he was at the forefront. He called his shot. And so, yeah, we, we put some additional stock into what Cam says about BYU's players because he's typically spot on. Very interesting. And he is so excited for tomorrow. Oh, my as, goodness. As we all are to have football back. Coming up, we're going to go live to the Smith Field House, visit with Jerem Jordan ahead of a very busy day of volleyball action on BYU Radio, BYU's TV app, and, of course, the mothership. Dave, we're seeing a lot of strange food combos that have uh, kind of resurfaced on social media, and, frankly, it's time for some of those combos to go away. Yeah, it sure is. We'll explain next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU BYU Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at BYU.edu today. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. That's why BYU football exists, is because of the fans. To have a bunch of fans that want to see you be aggressive, I think everybody can live through our 123 guys on the roster and the 11 that are on the field at a time. Really, it all starts and ends with the fans. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Dave McCann. I'm Spencer Linton. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. In the athletic... The top 131 teams are ranked in college football. Three teams ranked ahead of BYU. How many will still be ahead of BYU in the final rankings? Notre Dame 7, Baylor's 9, Oregon is 12. You know, I'd like to say that that only one will be ranked higher than BYU, just based on the history of college football and, like, typically teams that are ranked high in the preseason. Like, one of those three is probably going to be pretty good and stay up, up there somewhere. But it, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Probably two. 
Probably two of those three teams will be ranked ahead of BYU at the end of the season. Now, if BYU is only behind one of those teams, they've had a very, very special season, Dave. If you listen to Cam Mellor, it's not going to be Oregon. He is not buying Oregon, not. but he is really, really high on Baylor yeah. and Notre Dame. Yeah. Yeah, good selections. I think uh, the Irish will, they open with Ohio State. Let's just, we'll find out real fast where, Ohio, where Notre Dame is in the uh, top ten. They may be booted, depending on what happens, they may be booted out and kept out. If they play them tough, national media always keeps them up high. Yep. And, and so then they'll be camped out there. They got Ohio State, their other big games, North Carolina, before they play BYU in Vegas. So we'll know a lot about Notre yeah. Dame. We think they'll take care of business other than Ohio State by the time they get to BYU. All right. BYU tweeted out a ranked graphic about three fall sports being ranked in the preseason for the first time since 1997. It's been 25 years. Awesome. BYU cross-country coach Ed Eyestone retweeted it and then added this. Hmm. We should probably check how long it's been since BYU's had five teams ranked in the top 25. Cross-country preseason polls coming out soon. We hear you, Ed. Dave, is this a very justified, hey, don't forget about us tweet? It seems like somebody wasn't at the meeting. <laughs> Both of those teams are going to be ranked. They'll be ranked. Uh, they are phenomenal. And uh, anyone seen a new Connor Mance on campus? You know, We'll be looking around on Monday, see if someone just popped in as school gets back. He'll be a tough replacement, but the men's and women's teams are primed for the Big 12 right now. Yeah, and, and we should point out, when we talked about this yesterday, like the three teams, we very quickly pointed out, hey, the cross-country yeah. teams will be ranked. So, like, BYU is going to have five ranked teams going into their respective fall seasons. And then and Coach Eystone was just like, yes, you're right. <laughs> yes, you're right. And, and they might be ranked the highest. That's the thing. We're talking about like teams. We're talking about a team like legitimately could win a national championship, the men and the women. Yeah. Like that's the team. They'll be the top fives and so men. Then maybe they yes. just jump to the top of that graphic. Okay, with the uh, rankings out of the way, Dave, we've all seen some weird food combinations creeping out on social media. This seems to be like a trend that's growing. We saw the hot dog uh, in a drinks. Uh, thing kind of take off over the weekend, which is I can't believe people are still doing that like using a hot dog as a straw I watched that several times. I didn't it's, understand it. Stop it's not, it. First of all, get some ketchup and mustard on that <laughs> And it's not a straw. Okay. Well, these two have recently uh, been revealed Would you rather partake of the cotton candy pickle burrito? or the Oscar Mayer Cold dog. It's a hot dog flavored frozen popsicle that is disgusting. Dave, you got to pick one. What are you picking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the cold dog. Yeah, really? Yeah. You want I, a hot dog popsicle? There's no popsicle? way I'm eating that pickle burrito with uh, <laughs> sweet and sour, whatever. The cold dog, <laughs> we've all had cold hot dogs, let's be honest. <laughs> so they gross. They weren't great, but they got to be better than the cotton candy pickle burrito. <laughs> Unless I could pick off the cotton candy uh, and eat it and then leave everything else. It's absolutely what, what disgusting. What would you uh, do? I can't do a hot dog popsicle. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I've tried to talk myself into it. I can't, I can't do it. So I will settle for the just slightly less disgusting cotton candy pickle. <laughs> you know Why do you do this, people? You Why? Know what, you know what I'm not doing? I'm not buying stock in either one of those. Yeah. But coming up, <laughs> Failing who stock. are you buying stock in when it comes to BYU football? And the voice of volleyball for BYU TV, Jerem Jordan, will join us as we kick off 10th ranked BYU women's volleyball season opener doubleheader. This is BYU Sports Nation.
This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Brandt is laying his guitar aside and picking up a hammer. There actually are things that can be done to help people in situations like this. This is our <laughs> house for real. I don't think you can ever dream too much. As the receivers become the givers, they in turn help themselves. Watch Paul Brandt's Build It Forward on BYU TV or with the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Two matches today for 10th-ranked BYU Volleyball as they start their season at home. First up, Ryder at 2 Eastern time. You can watch that live on the BYU TV app. Tonight in prime time, it is Duke, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain on BYU TV and the app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio C on a Friday. This segment presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Joining us now from the Smithfield House to preview the doubleheader, specifically the first game against the Ryder Bronx, is the voice of BYU men's and women's volleyball on BYU TV. He is Jerem Jordan. Jerem, you What's got up, the best Dallas? seat in the house, man. We're starting the season. Number 10 team. How are things going over there? Great. Uh, it's great to be back in the Smithfield house. Uh, it's going to be a fun day of volleyball. we got four matches here, obviously, with BYU and Ryder, as you mentioned. Thanks for calling them the Bronx. Literally, at the beginning of the week, I was like, oh, they're the Bronx, not the Broncos? We're all getting used to that one, which is fun. <laughs> but obviously, and you guys talked about it at the beginning of the show, Duke in Provo is rare. We, I, I haven't looked through every team's history with series and opponents, but having Duke in Provo is pretty awesome. And Ohio State on the same day, as you mentioned, Dave, which is great. And then Washington State is a team that finished in the top 25, went to the NCAA tournament, won a game. They had a serious injury to their best player. Otherwise, they might have gone a little further in the tourney. They're just out in the ABCA poll. So we've got BYU and Washington State, which is coming up Saturday night. Duke tonight first, as you mentioned, Ryder, who's just to my right over here waiting for Duke and Wazoo behind us, which you can watch on the BYU TV app, by the way, uh, as we speak. So we'll be live at uh, noon. And this BYU team's ranked number 10 in the country. They return four really quality pieces from last year and inject some really talented freshmen. I'm excited about the season. I think this is another WCC champ, Sweet 16 kind of group. This is the last year for uh, women's volleyball before the Big 12. They're picked to win the league. Whitney Bauer was on with us yesterday um, talking about pressure and expectation. And there's so much that goes into the very first game, even if you're expected to dominate. And, of course, Duke, as you mentioned, later tonight. But uh, what are the challenges for this BYU team here with a challenging schedule to start? I think BYU is used to this. Every player but the freshmen and some of the transfers come in, and they know what the standard is. Heather Olmstead, by the way, isn't just the winningest coach active among college volleyball coaches by win percentages. It's all time. So this program is used to winning, used to winning conference championships, used to getting to at least the Sweet 16. They've done that in six of the seven years under Heather, and in 2018 went to the Final Four, as we know. They know they've got to bring it, and they have a schedule that is tougher than last year. BYU was ranked fourth to end the regular season, but got an 11 seed. This year, if BYU is ranked fourth at the end of the season, they're going to get a top four seed because they play an incredible schedule. They've got five ranked teams on the schedule, three in the top ten. They're all going to be in a row in a couple of weeks, starting, as you guys talked about with Whitney yesterday. I watch the show when I'm not on sometimes. Big fan. Uh, Pitt next Saturday, as you mentioned. 
Then they go to Atlanta and they play Georgia Tech and Ohio State, who are also in the top 10. Then you come home, you go to at Utah, who's ranked 22nd. So this group is ready. Whitney Bauer, Volleyball Magazine article. I'm, I'm going to get pegged by a ball here at some point, so I'm not looking. But Whitney Bauer, Volleyball Magazine yesterday, put out an article that said she's the most underrated center in the country. The only reason she's not in the USA pipeline a little bit more, guys, because she's 5'9". She, if she was six foot, maybe she'd be an opposite. But she's amazing. Heather Knighting at middle blocker is back for her senior year. Aaron Livingston at outside. To me, she's taken the jump. We've got to see it. She's going to play all six rotations for the first time uh, in her career. And uh, Kate Grimmer at opposite was the first team all-conference player before Kenzie Kerber had the one and done last year, which, by the way, Kenzie going to be roaming the sidelines yep. for us this season, which will be fun. Yeah, fantastic to have Kenzie on board uh, with our BYU TV Sports crew. Okay, Jerem, uh, before we let you turn around and watch more volleyball and get prepared to call a Ryder and BYU, we do, because it's football eve of sorts on the college football circuit, we have been discussing stock options, and you need your say. As a Amazon. big fan of this program, oh. you need to have your say, okay? So who has the highest stock right now of any BYU football player? Blake Freeland, no question. I, I, I agree uh, with what was said earlier. Uh, Blake Freeland is on a lot of first-round boards, which is awesome. Uh, and here's a guy who, if he plays well this season, he's going to earn a lot of dough. Like, Blake could take all of us to lunch several times and, and not even notice it then. So Blake is the highest stock guy at this point preseason. A lot of great momentum for him going into the offseason and into this year. He's got to deliver now. Okay. Now we discussed some middling stock options as well. Kind of like we're waiting to see. We think it's going to be pretty good, <laughs> but we're waiting to see. Uh, Dave went with Keanu Hill. I chose Chris Brooks because we're high on those guys, but we, it's not like uh, we need to see a little bit more. Who's the middling stock option for you? Just to provide a different angle than what you guys did, Isaac Rex, here's a guy who had 12 touchdowns as a freshman two years ago, had a couple last year, gets hurt late in the season against USC. He's back. He's not full go. He's expected to be full go in game one, but I think we'll really start to see him later uh, later in the season. Now, he's not going to put up the same kind of numbers that he did as a freshman. 12 TDs is just ridiculous. There are too many options on this team, and BYU is not playing that schedule, right? Uh, but I do expect uh, Isaac Rex to be more of a red zone target for BYU. And there are a lot of options, but I'd love to see him kind of get in that 400 to 500 yard range with about five or six touchdowns and then come back for a senior year where he just crushes it. Sean Arulian on Facebook, Jerem says that Jaron Hall is the obvious answer, but I think I'll say Ryan Rico. This one is for Jim. Oh, uh, yeah, the highest stock, he's saying Ryan Rico. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah's saying Ryan Rico. Yeah, Ryan, listen, uh, I'm probably going to die on the sill, but yeah, Ryan Rico at his position is the best player on the team. Um, does that mean he's going to be the highest uh, draft pick of BYU? No, but it means that we, BYU may have a punter drafted. Like, Ryan's that good, and the offense is too good for this to be noticed, okay? This is a great problem. We don't see Ryan a lot. He just shows up, uh, does his job, and, and bounces, right? And sometimes he <laughs> fake punts against, uh, what was it, Louisiana Tech or Troy or something for like 40 yards up 40. Sometimes that happens too. All right, okay, Jaron, one more. We, we've got uh, long shot stock, and you can go any direction you want with this, okay? And it could be super long shot. Dave, he went to back quarterback Jacob Conover, um, and so that, that was a projection of like, well, just maybe they might need him this year. I jokingly said this morning, uh, it's maybe, maybe it's my Doge coins, Cash Peterman, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your long shot stock option for BYU football? It's a good question where it's like, okay, right now we're not expecting this person to have a massive impact, but perhaps suddenly, and then you got to sell quick. Uh, <laughs> if that's the case. How about Dallin Holker? Okay. Here's a guy who in 2018, we were super high on. We've been high on. We're excited about him. Let's see this guy do do more right there's a lot of options again it's tough in the BYU offense to really crack that uh, for some big numbers but what if Dallin Holker is a guy who has like eight touchdowns this year and it's just a third down machine like Dennis Pitt a light but like way more likable what if Dallin Holker is that guy okay all right uh you know I mean uh, technically my long shot stock option uh was not it was not Dallin Holker. It was Braden Cosper because I think he's just kind of lost down there, but he's been super yep. consistent. So yep. top four guy right now among those receivers that we haven't really talked about, Braden. I think I think we need to given uh, what we're hearing and seeing from uh, practice. 
I just hope, I just hope, Dave, we don't need your long-term stock option a lot in Jacob Conover. He'll be ready. Call hey, up. he's going to hand <laughs> off a ton to Miles Davis at the end of games. BYU is up uh, 17 plus, you know. That's All right. True. Hey, Jerem, uh, we look forward to the doubleheader of BYU volleyball on BYU TV and BYU TV app. Good luck, man. We'll be watching. Thanks. Let's go, baby. All right. The season is upon us. Not just football, volleyball. Yeah. Soccer's two games in as of tonight. And now a student body's coming. Yes. Coming up, a rise and shout out to the newest of the Cougars in town. And which of your elite voice options has earned the highest stock? We'll discuss next on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. When I was about your age, I was sent to stay with my grandpa. Come on. Hello. Where did you come from? I have a good feeling about us. I think we're going to be best mates. Dogs don't sleep in the house. Hello, Mick. Please, call me Betty. Miss, Mum. Just Betty. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation's on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Please subscribe, rate, and review. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Master Resort answering our question of the day. Which BYU football player are you buying stock in before the season starts? At Dallin WBYU answers on Twitter. Keenan Peely. Yeah. We both like Keenan, Dave. He was incredible last year before getting injured, and I think he is set up for a blockbuster season in 2022. You're right. Get that money. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Who should we give it to, Dave? How about we give it to all of these folks at Lavelle Edwards Stadium last night? The freshmen, Woo! the incoming class, they'll be running around campus trying to figure out which building is where <laughs> Monday morning. Welcome to Al town. Always one of my favorite images of the year. Yeah. They, they form that Y in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. All right, our thanks to today's guest, Cam Miller. Conversation continues 24 7. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Dave, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Amy Gant. We'll see you in an hour for BYU Women's Volleyball live on BYU TV. Go Cougs.